Hey, what's up, everyone? We are live here. I see some uh, some comments coming in already. I'm stoked that you guys are excited about this. I saw some comments that you guys are super excited to uh, check out this live stream. I'm excited for it too. Um, while everyone else is just jumping in and getting connected here, I'll just briefly give the backstory of this whole live stream in case you haven't seen the video that we're talking about here. So about a month ago, yeah, I think about a month ago, I put out a video um, saying that I paid five different mastering engineers to master the same song and that the prices range from 20 bucks on Fiverr and then all the way up to Abbey Road and Famous Studios, you know, over a hundred dollars. Um, and the end result of that video, I was totally shocked because um, the $20 master of an engineer who was uh, we found on Fiverr totally beat everyone else. Um, and I've been getting a lot of, or I've been seeing a lot of comments on that video, like, who's the guy, who's the guy? And I did show who it was just briefly in the video because I wanted to give him a shout out, but I, I didn't want to like totally overwhelm him with um, traffic and messages and stuff. So I thought, you know, people who actually care enough to watch the whole video, they can find out who he is. Um, but still, I know a ton of you guys have been um, wondering who it was, wishing that you could hear what the process was of the master and all that. So um, yeah, I'm happy to say I've uh, got Marvin here from Tide Studios in London. I wanted to bring him on, get a, his reaction to the video, what it was like from his side. And we'll also dig into the technical side of things and what his mastering process is and you know how he actually mastered this song. So with that said, let me bring in Marvin here. There we go. All right, you're on, dude. How's it Hello. going? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, very excited to talk to you. And yeah, let's speak about mastering, mixing music, whatever you want. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think the first question that everyone wants to know, including myself, would be, how did you find out about the video when it came out, and what was your initial reaction? So, uh, like when the video was released, I was just sitting here in the studio working, and I started getting a bunch of of messages and at first I didn't think too much but then it was more and more and more and then someone sent me the video link and I clicked it and at first I was uh, I had a bit of a ball in my stomach because it was just like I paid these engineers like and I didn't know where I was gonna rank like fifth last to first no idea and then yeah when I watched it I was uh, I actually I wasn't sure which one uh, was my version like because you clicked them so quickly that uh, for, for me it was like difficult to tell which one was which and uh, but I, w I was like super stoked with the results and yeah, it's been great for me. Thank you. Yeah. What's, um, what's been, I mean, and I'm sure for you, it was like, it was probably a couple of weeks that you actually mastered it before the video even came out. Right. So that makes sense that you couldn't yeah. instantly tell, um, which was yours. Right. So it was kind of just, did you think, or just treat it like, oh, this is just another random project, you know, from Fiverr and yeah, exactly. Like I had no idea. Like it was to me, it just seemed like any other job and just did the same as always yeah i mean this it worked out perfect because the the song that i sent you was a song that i mixed for one of my paid courses like a couple of years ago where i actually got members of the course to submit their tracks and then we voted on which one they wanted me to mix and then i i mixed it in kind of real time and showed them what i did but that particular one i never got mastered um and i've always thought it was a, a cool song and a cool mix um, so it was like the perfect song to use for this experiment. Um, and you absolutely, absolutely killed it. I totally love the master. It gave it exactly what it, Thanks. what it needed. Uh, yeah. So, and it's great. And I saw the band members were commenting on the video too, being like, can we use this? <laughs> so after all of that, it's like, finally, it's a great master on this mix and it could actually get, uh, released. So yeah. Okay. So you Thanks. said you got a whole, a whole bunch of uh, messages, um, well, <sighs> Yeah, how did it impact you? Like, has anything changed in your business or just the amount of work you're doing since that video came out? Yeah, definitely. So, <clears throat> I mean, for me, a normal month is like I work on maybe, and I I do more mixing than mastering actually, but for me, like a normal month is maybe like 70 to 90 songs, most of them mixing. So I do like two, three a day, something like that. And since you released the video, I've gotten hundreds of messages. I've done I think by now must be something between 250, 300 uh, projects. I, I think it's been like three or four weeks now. So I've just wow. been working on stuff. And uh, <laughs> for, for me, what really changed is that, uh, 
I mean, not every message I get actually turns into a job. So like I spend the mornings now doing some admin work, like just answering messages because I wake up and I have like a bunch of messages still every morning. And like this morning, it was the same still just saying, I saw you on this YouTube video. Do you, <laughs> can you work on the song? And right. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, it's, I knew it was a fine line, right? Cause doing this experiment, this type of thing, I would definitely never like, to, you know, if there was a master or a mix that was that I thought was bad, I would never say, "Oh, this is was, this was bad and it was done by this person." But because it was, I wasn't planning on revealing anyone in the video, um, mm. but because it was such a cool, unexpected, I, I guess, twist, I was like, "Man, I'd love to. Maybe this guy will get some more work um, if I shut him out." So I'm glad. I'm glad that that worked out. I'm sorry that it's having to be a bunch of admin <laughs> work for you but... no, that's fine uh, yeah. no it, it actually changed for me now that like i start the mornings with the admin work and then i actually i master for a couple of hours now every morning which i haven't done before mm -hmm. for me before the master was pretty rare actually but no it's a it's a part of my workflow so that's that's nice okay do you enjoy what do you prefer mi mixing or mastering i think like uh I'm more obsessed with the mixing part for sure because you have more influence than with the master. But mm -hmm. uh, like the good thing is for a conversation like this now, I just had like 200 times uh, practice for to talk about mastering. So yeah, yeah. that's yeah. huge, man. Um, yeah. What? So so speaking of that, the amount of work um, I mentioned that we found you on Fiverr. Um, before we get into the technical parts of the mastering, like, what did you think about? What? Well, wait, first question: Why? Why are you on Fiverr and how, how long have you been on there? So I've been a full-time sound engineer for th almost three years now. And I've been on Fiverr for a year and a half, maybe coming up to two years, something like that. And I ended up on Fiverr because a friend of mine actually recommended this. He was a drummer in a band that I played in and he was offering drum work. And I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. And for me, it's been amazing. Like I've gotten so much work through Fiverr and uh, even before this video, it's been like a pretty steady way of getting new clients all the time. And yeah. yeah. Do you, what did you think about in my video? And I said, you know, the rates are too low. You're worth more. You should raise your rates to get off five or like what, what's, it sounds like you're still on it. So what's your position or take on that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I kind of know your philosophy. I think you, you recommend to charge higher, which is fair enough, but like my take on that is that, see, like I, I've been maybe really obsessed with the whole production thing for maybe around like four or five years and really lucky that I'm doing it as a full-time job, but I still feel like I'm, I still want to learn. So I, I'd much rather charge a low rate and do high volume of work and get a lot of experience that way than to put my rate super high and then work, do like five songs a month or something like that. Mm. Like, I think it will hopefully the more you do something, the better you get. Hopefully it will pay off in the future just by working a lot, getting better and better. That's my philosophy on the whole thing. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, I mean, it's definitely true. I would imagine if you've done, you know, 200 songs in the last month, like that's that's a huge amount of reps. Um, so certainly that that makes a difference. So so right now your focus is more on just like getting this, your hands on as much material as possible. Um, do you think that, do you foresee yourself like eventually moving away from that and, and starting to charge more? I mean, it would be nice. Like, uh, I mean, I'm very grateful to Fiverr. There's downsides to it, but I, I mean, if I could be as busy as I am on Fiverr without it, that would be amazing for me in the future. But I don't really feel like I am at this point yet. Since since actually you've dropped the video, I've been getting emails and stuff like this. And that is very rare for me, actually. Most of the mm. stuff comes e either through Fiverr or let's say I get maybe 30% of my work through like WhatsApp, just like bands I've worked with recommended to another band and just work like that. But that just people find me randomly on the internet. That happens rarely if it's not on Fiverr. Mm. Yeah. Can you, is there a limit to like what you can set the, prices are on fiverr like could you stay on there and still like double your price yeah definitely i think it lets you go up to like a crazy high amount like twenty thousand or something like that oh okay uh, yeah. okay so it could still potentially be part of your yeah business and not necessarily have to be low low rates 
Definitely. There, there is some other engineers on Fiverr that I, I really like their work. Like I've, I follow them outside of Fiverr as well. And most mm -hmm. of them charge more than me. And um, well, they're busy too, but like th through my low rate, like I, I'm definitely very, very busy on Fiverr. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool, man. I mean, I, I would still say like in terms of the skills, at least from what I heard of that master, like it was bang on, dude. So I think it's easily worth hundred dollars so you know uh obviously you're captain yeah. of your own ship but um i think you could totally get way get way above but um yeah i, I understand where you're coming from too no, no i appreciate i appreciate you thanks for saying that yeah. well speaking of um that master i'm gonna pull it up and we'll actually listen quick to my original mix and then your master and then you can give us some info on it um there by the way guys if you're watching live um this is live someone asked if it was live it definitely is uh so if you got any questions for for marvin or about this then definitely throw it in the chat there and we'll try to get to that but let me pull up pro tools and i'm hoping that the audio works for you guys so up here this red track this is my original mix so i'm going to play that and then right below here this blue track that's marvin's master so here we go. All right, here's the master. And I'll skip ahead to a heavier part where we have some vocals here. This is the mix. Here's the master. Okay, I think hopefully that audio works for you guys. Um, but let's dig into it, man. Um, do you remember what your thoughts were or your initial reaction to the mix itself? Yeah, it's an interesting question because now I know that you mixed it. When I got it, like for me, it was, I, I thought it sounded great, but like uh, it's not that uncommon actually that people are good mixers out there and send me good stuff. So, uh, I, I first, I thought it was a really good sounding song. And um, I think I told your assistant as well that I thought the band was great and that, yeah, I really enjoyed working on it. And that was my first reaction to it. And okay, should I get into the mastering process? Yeah, why don't you just, yeah, whatever you remember, just talk about kind of how you went through it and yeah, go ahead. Sure. So I looked at the session again afterwards now to see what I actually did. And it's actually something that I do almost every time, like uh, obviously, it changes for what the song needs, but the setup is pretty much the same. And I can go into like full detail if you want and just like literally go through and say everything I've... Uh, go for it, yeah. I just start, yeah. And so the first thing, and that might sound a bit weird, is I put a Soothe on the track. Okay. And uh, because I one of your... I think one of the other studios said that they were bothered by the breathers by the loud sounds or something like that mm -hmm. and i i actually i thought the same and i put soothe on it just with like a very narrow band and just like kind of like de it maybe like half a db or something like that okay and i like using soothe on uh, not necessarily on masters but i love soothe for low end as well because i feel like in the low mids or low end often there's like sometimes there's like resonant bumps and soothe is, to me works amazing to like just control the low end and make it even and then you can con like then you can turn it up where you want it but if sometimes a note jumps out or something like this i feel soothe is amazing with that so i did these two things with uh soothe first okay. and then i did some saturation with uh the soft tube tape plugin it okay. has like 
uh, yeah, and then I put Pro and B on it, and uh, this together with the Sooth thing for the low end, like Sooth looks at the base and where the base is, and then the Pro and B I just select pretty much around the kick, maybe around like 60 hertz, and then goes down and up. Like I'm not sure how far exactly, but like a narrow band, and then uh, I can turn it up like the low end a little bit, but every time the kick hits, it ducks it back down so that I don't okay. overwhelm the kick and for me this uh i always have that on the master on, on my mixes too because this is kind of like a gain staging thing like i don't religiously gain stage but i'm sure you know when your mix bus compressor reacts the way that you're used to then you feel good about your gain staging at least sure and yeah. i have the same thing with the with the low band and pro and b just for the kick if it's just reacting to the kick then i know the low end is kind of right and oh so you mean like you have a process with that plugin where you kind of know just based on your go-to settings and where you have the gain at that if it's hitting a certain way you know that that's generally translates well yeah exactly like if it like if the if the compressor wrecks like crazy in the low end then i know i have way too much low end but if it just wrecks uh, to the kick and just ducks it like a little bit then usually it's fine and it worked on your mix as well so like i was curious actually because i always do that on my own mixes and on masters but it, it worked pretty nicely so so okay. this stuff I actually did, uh, ex th this is what I did on the track. And from there, it just went into my template. And in my template, I have a mix bus and a master bus. And uh, I can just start with the mix bus. And on the mix bus, there's another Pro MB. But this is like a five band thing that just maybe that's like half a dB or one dB of like just compression. And okay. this is just like a set and forget for me. I've, I've had it forever on there. and. What I like about it is that you can solo each band and then you can hear only the lows or only the low mids, or only the mids. Like it's really, if you want to have like the magnifying glass and look at the thing, it's really, it's a great tool for me just because of that already. Okay. And from there, uh, I ran it through Pultec and did the Pultec trick where you boost like the 30 hertz and attenuate it oh, at the same time. Right. And gave it 10K, like one dB of each, like so nothing, nothing major. Okay. Then into Oxford Inflator. I like how that one sounds. It's just a bit more saturation. Okay. And after that is a Gulfus Master. I'm not sure if you know the Gulfus plugin. It's kind of like a Sooth plugin. Yeah, I've heard of it, and but I've never used it. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, I mean, all of these things that I use, I, I use a ton of plugins on it, but everything does like almost nothing. Like it's barely moving. Like everything is like half a dB or something like that. Yeah. And then... Yeah, from Gulfus Master, it went into the Slate FGX. I think you like using that one too, right? Yep. That has uh, the only part. The only thing that I used of it was the low punch thing. Ah. Oh. So I not the a little bit of. No, no, just a little bit of the low punch and the detail, and you can kind of play around with it. And somewhere okay. it, in the sweet spot, it, it punches nicely in the lows as it promises. So yeah. yeah. And then from there it went. The Brainworks V3 EQ, and there I just like mono below 80 hertz, and I think I put the stereo width at like 105 percent or something like that, like just a tiny bit wider. Okay. And then so, from then it leaves my mix bus and goes into the master bus, and then it's uh, the limiting thing, and uh, I use the Sir standard clip, and I just shave off the drum transients like okay. a tiny bit, and from there it goes into the Pro A2 where I just do the final push, like just a little bit more loudness and that's it. And that's okay. the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I made notes here. So we got the soothe doing a bit of DSing and controlling the breaths and a bit of low end soft tube tape saturation, uh, pro MB just on the low end. And then another yeah. pro MB five band, uh, the pull tech, which, which pull tech version, by the way, which plugin the uad version i used to use the waves forever but i got the uad stuff recently and i don't regret getting it i like it okay oh. and then oxford inflator which is more saturation i'm not super familiar with that one it is yeah it's just saturation okay and then the, the yeah. gofoss fgx just for the low punch knob and then you made everything mono below did you say 80 yeah 80 hertz and gave it like a bit of stereo width like 105 okay. percent or something like that yeah on everything above that okay yeah. okay so yeah that's like that's a pretty long chain but like you said just barely touching at each stage um, which is pretty common to hear from from mastering engineers and then mm. 
again, at the end, you just got a bit of clipping, clipping, a bit of limiting. So, I mean, you got the master pretty loud. Um, so it's, it sounds like that loudness is not just coming from, you know, a bunch of clipping or slamming a limiter at the end. It's like, it sounds like it's all these tiny little steps that, you know, the saturation, which are maybe shaving off a bit, uh, and then adding more content and then exactly, a little yeah. bit of multiband. So it's just a bit along the way that's adding up. Right. Yeah. And I think my pro a two was, I think I did one and a half DB of gain on it. And then it has the luffs reading. And I think in my session, it read like minus seven luffs on the loud part. And, but I have it set to true peak minus one db so i think when it goes out it goes down to minus eight even so it's not crazy loud like it could be way louder i think yeah yeah, yeah it, it could have been louder but i think yeah. i think you hit the right balance of it i mean uh, the reason i chose yours is because i think you really filled in the low the low end's really solid by the way i think i think that really helped it i thought obviously the mix was in the right ballpark but it just like it sounded like it was more nailed down and just consistent. And then the low mid sounded fatter. Like your master sounds very similar to my mix, but it's just fatter, which is almost always what I want from a mastering engineer because yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah I, I usually have it bright enough. Usually you guys will brighten it a bit. Um, but usually that's, I don't know if it's just me as a mixer. Like I find like in the low mids, I find that I often need a little help on the master to just pump those up a little bit, which I think you did perfectly. There's the right amount of brightness without it being harsh. Um, so yeah, I, th I thought it was great, man. It's really interesting to hear, hear the chain there. Yeah. Thanks. And I, yeah, I agree. Like I, I like, I like it darker most of the time too, but I feel like maybe when we work on music all day and we have like, like guitars that are screaming the whole time, like we <laughs> enjoy turning these frequencies down and having it all sit <laughs> a bit lower. Yeah. yeah. No, it definitely wasn't overly. It wasn't overly bright. Um, no. And yeah, I mean, I mean, what's, what is your thought on loudness? Cause I know if you read the comments on the video, there's a lot of people saying like, oh, you didn't, you didn't volume match it. But to me, it's like that kind of negates part of the whole purpose of ma like part of mastering is getting it loud enough. Um, so I very purposely did not volume match them because that is part of the feeling and it is part of how the master is going to translate and all that. Um, so. Yeah, what's what's your take on the whole loudness thing? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think maybe the best answer from my perspective is that all the mixing and mastering engineers that I look up to, especially in the heavier genres, go way louder. They go like to up to like minus five. And if they can do it, like why can't I do it? And uh, <laughs> I actually I mix into this chain. Like I, I mix into this master most of the time. So when I mix, I hear it back at like loud like loud louder than probably most of these comments want wanted but like i hear it loud and i feel like when you mix into something that is loud already you treat everything totally different because yeah if you have a, a mix that's maybe not totally balanced in the low end and then you make it loud it distorts and it doesn't sound any good but if you mm. go loud from the start you hear that straight away and you can do something about it and you end up with a very clean but very loud sounding result and to me the whole loudness thing same like using a mix bus compressor. Like I, I don't hate how limiters sound. I like how they sound. I like I like how it sounds when it's a bit. I mean, people call it squash, but to me, it sounds energetic. Like and especially when we talk about metal, that's an energy you don't get any other way. You don't get it if you yeah, if you yeah. do it at like minus fourteen. And I enjoy that sound. Yeah. And yeah. No, it's, I totally agree. That's like we're just so used to it now. Since you know, I don't know, late nineties, early two thousands. Like we we're used to hearing exactly rock that. and pop music at. Yeah. those kind of levels. Um, and like you said, you, you don't get that kind of intensity without a bit of that squeeze and push from a, from limiting, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's like, I mean, we can complain about it now, but it's the same with the first guy that edited drums. Like my, my ears are used to hearing perfect drums and I can hate on the guy who did it first, but like, if it, if it's not edited, it doesn't sound right. And it's the same for me with the loudness. It's just how music sounds right to me now. And, it's just yeah. how it is, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Were, were you were you surprised at watching the video and seeing how the Abbey Roadmaster was very, very quiet in comparison? Did that surprise you? It did, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not really sure what the process is over there, so but I, it definitely was a surprise. I thought they, especially with this kind of music, would also go loud, but I don't know. 
Yeah. yeah. It was, that was a mystery to me. Um, what's, what do you like listening on or what, what's your environment like there? So I have the, um, HS eights behind me and I have a subwoofer as well. And that's pretty much the only thing that I use. Um, I have these headphones, but I barely use them. Wow. And I have another set of uh, monitors downstairs in the living room that I sometimes after I'm done here, I go and just check if it sounds good there. But yeah, wow. that's the only things I listen on. Yeah. That's uh, that's impressive, man. I used to mix on the HS eights and I couldn't, I had a lot of problems with translation. So I'm s- impressed and surprised that you can just listen on those and, and get a master that's yeah, like pretty much nailed. I think, I mean, you're, I, I'm actually not sure about this, but you reference a lot too, right? And I feel like if you reference, you can listen pretty much on whatever you want because you get used to what it should sound like and then make the decisions based on that. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of people uh, in the chat here. I'm going to see if there's... Okay, so someone asked what kind of headphones and monitors. Um... Okay, N- N3G is asking, do you use oversampling or true peak? Is it either or? Like, I mean, I use true, like, um, I use oversampling, but then my true peak on the A2 is set to minus one to leave just a little bit of headroom for whatever the, I think the, when it goes on streaming, they, I mean, I, I know that, that the A2 isn't perfect with the true peak limiting. Even if I set it to minus one, sometimes I get readings of like, it still goes to minus 0.4 or something like that. Oh, okay. And it can get you into trouble on Spotify and whatever. Does it? Yeah, I was I was interested uh, to see in this experiment. I think all five masters I got back, they were peaking at minus one, which I think is the first time I've had that. Even though Spotify and everything's been around for a long time, like most times I got a master back, it's always like right up at zero or point one or point two or something. But yeah, it was interesting you guys all did that. So I, I guess that's kind of the standard now, right? Just peaking at minus one. From what I understand, yeah. Okay. I, I've just been doing it like this forever now and sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. So you said on, on Fiverr, even though you're getting a lot of clients from there, typically the mixes are okay or like what's, how good is it? Uh, uh, and what I said is that like there, there are a lot of good mixes out there and uh, I quite often get really nice sounding mixes to master already. And uh, even, especially, no, not even, but especially now after this video, a lot of people reached out to me that had, that before that were going to maybe bigger names as well. And were like, oh, I wanted to try you out. And uh, I was actually really surprised that even though now, like, I mean, you've given me some credit and before that with my $20 price, I, I could always I kind of hide behind them and be like, well, it was $20. Like, I, I mean, even if you don't <laughs> like it, like it was just $20, but now like right. it, it came with a credit and I've done so many, so many masters now and everyone, like I haven't had like a single bad comment and like that was super nice for me. And wow. Yeah. Good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. How long have you been doing this and how did you kind of, how, how'd you learn? How'd you get, you know, to where you are right now? So. I think I started like probably like most people watching this as a musician in a band. I play guitar and I play drums and I never really thought too much about recording until my band went to record in a nice, in a nicer, bigger studio. And uh, that's when I really got into it. And that must have been maybe 2017. By the time I was still touring with my band a lot and didn't really get too much into it until maybe around like 2019 or something like that. And since then I've been taking it like really seriously. And for me, at first, I probably like everyone tried YouTube <laughs> to get some tips off of there. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure if I should advertise the competition, but like I'm uh, subscribed to Nay the Mix, for example, which has been a, also a great resource for me. And uh, aside of that, it's really just learning by doing. And I think that's how you learn anything, just like practice, practice, practice. And mm-hmm. you know, I just mix every day and couldn't be happier with it. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Congrats. It's, uh, it's really cool that I found you and yeah, I might send you some more stuff in the future. Cause you know, just like everyone else, it's like, wow, this guy's good. And the, the rate's amazing. So yeah, dude, yeah. um, I hope it keeps going. Hope it keeps going for you. Yeah. Thanks. Are there, uh, are there any other comments or anything you saw like in the YouTube comments from this video that you wanted to, that stood out to you that you would bring up or, or anything else to, that we could talk about? 
I think, uh, I, I mean, I didn't read too many comments, uh, but like a few of them, like I, I was like, I mean, obviously this whole thing is kind of a matter of taste too. So like everyone is entitled to their opinion. And like, I mean, I won this uh, shootout now in your opinion, but everyone has a different opinion. And mm. uh, so like, I totally get where everyone's coming from with the loudness as well, I understand. And uh, there were like a few comments that said, I probably just use like uh, ozone or something like that, or an AI yeah, master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> mean, I, un to... I also understand where they're coming from, but uh, yeah. yeah. That's true. I, there was a lot of that, um, but yeah. clearly now you've you've dispelled that. That's you certainly yeah. had. A it lot would of have fun. been interesting though to compare to the Ozone Master Two preset. Yeah. yeah, that could definitely be a future a future comparison. Um, yeah. In my price had... range, I, I I get a lot of uh, people actually who try AI mastering first, and then they're not happy, and then they come to me because uh, I'm the next more more uh, yeah the next level up pretty much. The next right yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Frank had a good question here. How long do you spend on each song when you're mastering? Yeah, um, on your song, I probably spend like less than thirty minutes on it, and that's pretty common for me. Like, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how. You, I, I mean, I'm sure you agree with this: is that uh, things don't get better to me because you spend more time on them, but you can make things better because you know more what you're doing and you just listen to it and it pretty much jumps out at you like straight away like in the first few seconds and you know what you want to do and yep. it doesn't i mean you're listening to a master you're just doing like a finer balance pretty much so you can hear pretty much straight away what do you want to be better and just act upon it so it doesn't take very long yep in my opinion at least yeah, yeah i mean the better you are the, the faster it should be but yeah that's that's pretty yeah. typical amount of time for a master i'd say um, yeah. Tony saying, when you master, do you ever give mixed feedback if something couldn't be fixed, um, or if something could have made the master better? Do you ever do that? That's a difficult question. Um, and I want to answer that, uh, in a way. So how do I say, like, I, I'm, I'm happy to give uh, mixed feedback, yeah, but like I'm also, I don't want to talk myself out of the job. So like I always try to feel out if uh, if my feedback could actually be achieved by the person doing it, or maybe they also like what they did. Maybe they don't want to hear my opinion. So like I'm very careful to give uh, feedback unless I'm asked what I think, yeah. then, then I, I will happily give my feedback, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right the right approach. Um, if the mixer is asking, you know, is there anything I could change first? Then that's one thing. But I think generally, yeah, I like how you handle it, where it's just like, okay, you've given me the the final mix. I'm gonna do my thing now and, and not try and go back and forth a bunch. Yeah, like you actually you limited your mix a lot, and uh, at first I thought it's probably I I'm not sure if it's uh. Like I would have maybe sometimes asked if I could have it a bit quieter, but like in your case, I didn't. Uh, but also like, I mean, you didn't shave off any, like the thing is like if you limit first and then you run it through the whole thing again and you limit it again, all you do is like you squash it for no reason really. Like, so you can yeah. start quieter. There's no problem with it. And mm -hmm. if I think it's too loud before, I would say like sometimes people send me something that is like totally squashed already. And then I'm like, this doesn't work, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I remember seeing some comments there. Like someone was like, "Your mix was so, so loud. Why would you even send it to mastering?" <laughs> I think it's like, I mean, it really was like a lot of the loudness. Like the waveform looks big and it's fairly loud, but that's a lot of that's baked into the mix itself. It's not like I, yes, I had the Slate FGX on the mix bus, but it's like it's barely touching. So a lot of that loudness is yeah. is baked in way earlier in the mix, and it's on purpose because, you know, like when I was starting out my mixes were not like that. I would send them to mastering way quieter, but like, as you grow in confidence and you kind of know typically what happens during mastering and what it's going to end up like, I kind of know, well, number one, like you said, I, w I want to mix into a little bit of that so that I know what it's going to sound like, or at least be in the ballpark. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can use my ears to know like, okay, yes, this is loud, but you know, I'm not ruining the punch. I'm not, I'm not, making exactly, it sound yeah. worse because of the loudness where I'm, I'm sure that's maybe the difference for you is 
you could get sent a loud mix and it can be mm. loud and, and still sound great or it could be loud and be squashed the wrong way <laughs> in which case maybe you would want to adjust right? exactly yeah. that's yeah. like one of the pitfalls too by judging it by by eye when you just look at it and you see something that's flat already like listen to it first like i mean your sound are totally fine sometimes mm. it doesn't and no i mean what everything you said i agree with and like i mean loudness i'm not sure i, I think probably everyone has this experience like even if you upload to streaming and your loudness isn't baked into the mix already, you will still sound quieter than everyone else, even though it is everything is minus 14 because loudness is not just about the number. That's like the, the number is like some computer making this up, but loudness is about like fullness and not so many other things. It's not just about like peak values or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a really great question here. Uh, before we wrap up, I think we should Actually, a couple similar questions. So the the mythology is asking, what's the main or most common thing you tend to find that you need to do or enhance? So any advice to to mixers to make your life easier? Like what's what's the most common problems you see in mixes? Like a lot of people want actually want really loud masters, but they don't really have the low end under control. So then as soon as you want to make it loud, it starts distorting. And in a master, you can you can do a fair amount of things to help it and take care of it. But I mean, it, it's better if you take care of it in the mix. Like there's so many things you can do. If you have like a huge low end from your base, like side chain to the kick or whatever, this is stuff I can't do in a master. Like a, mm. a master, I can just do like a global setting. So yeah, that's yeah. probably the number one thing that people want. Like can, can, actually most people are like, can you turn it up a bit more? And uh, then I'm like, yeah, but then maybe we have to take out some low end or either like, it's it's mostly about low end for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, dude, this was super interesting and informative. I it's really cool to get your take on this whole thing. Um, so thanks for agreeing to do this. Um, where we've had a few comments, like where can people uh, find you online and, and get in touch with you or follow you? Um, you can. Probably just Google Tight Studio London or there's tightstudiolondon.com, Tight Studio London on Instagram. Like I'm on all these things, all with the same name. So it's always Tight, Tight Studio London all together. Tight Studio oh. London. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, definitely go and check out Marvin, tightstudiolondon.com or Tight Studio London on Instagram, hit him up on Fiber, send him some, some stuff to master. Um, I'm sure he'll deliver a great result. So Thanks again, Marvin. This is great. Um, wish you all the best, dude. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Like this has been a great opportunity for me. So like, I'm really thankful. Absolutely, yeah. man. My pleasure. All right. Take care. Goodbye everyone. Bye mate.